That day, if our positions were switched, would our fates be different? Would I have your life and you mine? Virgil is the son of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. He was born as a half demon, half human, while Sparta himself disappeared and eventually perished in an unspecified manner. Sparta left a few ornaments for the twins, passing the torch for the fight against demon kind. Virgil was entitled to an ominous sword forged in darkness, aptly named the Yamato. The Yamato allowed any user to cut an interdimensional portal between time and space. This allows the user to travel to any area they see fit while being able to bridge a pathway between the human realm and the demon realm. This is why Yamato is heavily sought after by the Order during the events of Devil May Cry 4. Along with that, an heirloom was given to the twins on their birthday, split halves of an amulet that served as a key for future events to come. Virgil quickly formed a maternal bond with his mother Eva. She's often recognized as the only thing that bound and twisted together any remnants of humanity about Virgil. There's also another half within the Sparta lineage, his youngest son, Dante. Often in their youth, Virgil would fuel an intense rivalry with his brother Dante whilst using wooden swords to test their abilities. An old man recollected a memory about Virgil, a moment where he gave Virgil insight which would give him an acquired taste for reading and poetry. I often think of that boy as of late, wise beyond his scant years. He would show up at my home with his nose crammed into some collection of poems. He seemed to favor William Blake most of all, so one day I gave him a Blake anthology as a present. With an expression of delight on his face, he asked to borrow a pen. Strange though I found the request, I gave him the pen on my person. The boy opened the back cover and proceeded to scribble his own name within. I was puzzled to see him write on the book in such a way and I asked the lad what possessed him to do such a thing. Clutching the anthology to his chest, he answered dustily. I have a twin brother, sir. We fight over things often so I have to write my name down on things to make them truly mine. I found myself charmed by his statement and at once envious of such purity, I felt ashamed me, a self-styled bibliophile, had devoted himself solely to preserving the beauty of books. It was clear that this child loved books far more than I ever did. That child is no longer in this town Perhaps he is no longer in this world. To think that a promising youth like that could lose his life while a lout like me still drags on. The thought is almost unbearable. I am already in my twilight years. Perhaps this is why I recall that youth's serene eyes at every opportunity. That pure, untainted youth. The book with Virgil's insignia marked across the back cover will become pertinent later in the timeline, since Virgil seems to keep it during a crucial event. During one unfaithful day, Dante was with Eva while Virgil was out by himself alone after. The separation occurred after Dante tried to steal Virgil's new book away, which brought an ensuing struggle between the siblings. Mundus, the Prince of Darkness, had plotted revenge for Sparta sealing him away during the Great War. Sparta sealed away Mundus for planning to lead an assault against the human population. Therefore, he rebelled against this particular plan. Little did he know that Mundus had his eyes set on a blonde, innocent guardian as unprecedented events occurred. Come here. You need to hide, Dante. No matter what happens, you mustn't leave. I need to find Virgil. <laughs> 
I promise I'll be back. I know this is hard. You must listen to me. Be a big boy. A man, huh? If I don't return, you must run. By yourself, alone. You must change your name. Forget your past and start a new life. As someone else. A new beginning. Virgil! Eva was then murdered by an army of skeletal demons within Sparta's estate. Dante got out relatively unscathed thanks to Eva, but Virgil was heavily wounded by the army. He was then immediately left for dead as a series of vicious lacerations rained down on him. These same skeletal demons had no remorse for children either as they continued to stab Virgil to death. No one could help the child as he struggled to crawl away, only to receive a swift stab to his inner hand. There was no other alternative but to bury the light deep within as Virgil would be the first to activate his demonic powers. Virgil gained this power through a technique known as Devil Trigger. This special form could be only achieved by demons or half-breeds. It allows the user to manifest their otherworldly abilities which grants increased speed, power, flight, and quick healing for a limited amount of time. It's assumed that the sword wounds that were given to Virgil healed quickly through his demonic awakening. After picking up Yamato to defend himself, it was obvious that these creatures stood no chance against Sparta's kin. I would say that this one singular event caused a divergence point between the brothers and their ideals. It was during this time that Virgil developed an inferiority complex. He believed that he was not only weak to prevent Eva's death, but he also believed that his mother never even tried to find him during the attack. Eva saving Dante certainly caused a deep-rooted hatred inside of Virgil for thinking that his mother only showed favoritism to the youngest brother. Dante said that Virgil's logic was drowned in misinformation. He cited that Eva searched endlessly for the eldest son until she was finally destroyed. Mike controlled everything for Virgil from this day forward. All he ever cared about was an obsession for demonic power, control, and evolution. He left Dante by himself and he left his own humanity to burn along with the remains of his home. His philosophy was that he needed this power so he would never fail his loved ones again. Mundus kept close tabs on every move that the sons of Sparta made, wanting to kill them if they ever decided to hinder his plans. All of his minions sent after Dante and Virgil fell to their own blood-soaked blades as they endlessly walked earth to find Eva's killer. The brothers grew older at some point, and then Virgil stumbled across the town of Fortuna. He wondered why the citizens of this town would worship a demonic entity like Sparta as a god. After quickly clearing out a demonic attack in city streets, Virgil dons his cloak yet again while walking through a swath of people. It is there that a hooded woman notices the half-breed from a distance as he walks away. Virgil and this mysterious woman had a sexual liaison during his search for answers within the town. Virgil ends his search by saying that the townspeople aren't misguided but firmly stated that he will surpass his father's power. The woman woman in question probably has some connections to the order and unbeknownst to Virgil she remains pregnant with the unborn child. This child was called Nero, his one and only son. Virgil was initially approached by Arkham who coaxes Virgil about corrupt evil and what would a man do in search for power. He then asked Virgil to share a story about Sparta which opened up a dialogue eventually about the discovery of Tenmin Negru. Sparta sealed away Tenmin Negru over 2000 years ago with a very complex security system. It was for a purpose since reawakening the tower was the key to assessing Sparta's ultimate power. Many demons guard this place in the form of the the seven deadly sins, names that Sparta confiscated for when any devil worshipper dared to raise the tower again. 
In order to break Sparta's seal, Virgil needed Sparta's blood in order to undo the incantation strength within the tower. It was only accessible through blood, which coursed through Virgil's own veins. The perfect amulet must be completed in order to access Sparta's sword, Force Edge. Therefore, Arkham suggested that Dante was instrumental so all the pieces could fall into place. Arkham pays Dante a little visit as the dark night awaits to meet his brother yet again. You showed up. You sure know how to throw a party. No food, no drinks, and the only babe just left. My sincerest apology, brother. I was so eager to see you, I couldn't concentrate on preparations for the bash. Whatever. At any rate, it's been a whole year since we last met. How about a kiss from your little brother? Or better yet, how about a kiss from this? This is what they call a heartwarming family reunion, eh? You got that right. Virgil swiftly defeats his younger brother, putting a nail into the coffin as he impaled Dante with his own sword, Rebellion. Dante immediately rises from the ground in a rainy tidal wave, punching through Virgil's Yamato with his own bare hand. Virgil recognizes that Dante's demon strength has finally awakened before being thrown away. Virgil ready Yamato to strike Dante down, but Arkham pleads against it since they are spending way too much time not restoring the seal. Virgil stops his assault to help Arkham, which leaves Dante to his own devices. Later on, Virgil arrives to lift a spell from Sparta's sealed chamber. He then starts to slowly question Arkham's motives by leaving a woman called Lady alive before stabbing him right through the chest. Virgil once again teases Arkham that caring for another person is just another sign of pitiful weakness. Arkham reminds him that demon and human blood mingles through his veins. Mocking the half demon, however, was a fatal mistake before the lone prophet saw his end in one swift cut. Virgil finally figures out that the seal isn't working before Arkham reveals himself as Jester, the man who was thought to be dead. It was an elaborate hoax to lure everyone in this area and activate the seal. Dante and Virgil fighting each other caused them to be weakened so Jester could gain an advantage. Lady's pure, innocent blood was the last piece needed to activate the seal in its full entirety. Virgil is then knocked out cold, leaving his newfound grief behind. The Dark Slayer doesn't arrive again until the final battle with Arkham as he creates a fragile alliance with Dante to put a stop to the madman's schemes. Once Arkham finally succumbs to his injuries, both brothers leap into a portal to the underground where a fight ensues over family heirlooms. Virgil claims that his soul is once again at odds with Dante and that the attainment for power is the only only thing that matters to him. He dons his father's force edge before the final battle commences. Ultimately, Virgil's plan is unsuccessful before being swiftly defeated by Dante. He opts to stay in the demon world, keeping one half of the amulet to himself, stating that it belongs to him before plunging himself into darkness. In the final scene, Mundus's eyes create a storm over the darkened air in the underworld. Virgil says that if Sparta was able to defeat the Prince of of darkness, then he should be able to do it too.
It'll be fun to fight with the Prince of Darkness. If my father did it, I should be able to do it too. Virgil is once again defeated by Mundus after a severely weakened state causes him to fall to the Devil Prince. Mundus then tortures Virgil with a set of bloody spikes to writhe and pierce his flesh as he mocks the son of Sparta. The broken hilt of Yamato falls to the ground as Mundus patronizes Virgil. He says that Virgil is pitifully weak due to human emotions and lingering thoughts about his brother Dante. Mundus then engulfs Virgil in a bundle of dark energy to exclaim that his human heart has made him soft. He says that he will now transform Virgil into a puppet that has no emotions or any sense of self about who he was originally. Nilo Angelo is then born from the ashes, a dark knight fully consumed by orders to kill Dante. The dark knight then kept attacking his brother throughout the events of DMC1, but hints of his former self remained, especially after the first encounter. Dante loses yet again, but memories resurfaced after seeing Dante's family amulet, which causes the black knight to remember his heritage. It is not until Nilo Angelo is supposedly destroyed that the other half of the amulet falls before Dante, giving the youngest son a painful reminder that he couldn't save Virgil yet again. Virgil is evidently alive after the events of Devil May Cry 4. Mundus's dark influence was completely evaporated from his body. However, Virgil had a bigger problem to deal with since his body was effectively deteriorating after constant battles with Dante. Hour after hour, his form was breaking down, fading away as he needed to find an alternative solution. He managed to sense Yamato, which reformed in Devil May Cry 4 due to the power of Nero. Yamato was then absorbed into Nero's arm from in that point in in time, we saw Nero was working in a garage as Virgil attacked him immediately, ripping off the Devil Bringer and using Yamato to shift through an alternate dimension. Lesser demons known as Chaos tried to attack Virgil, but they were clearly outmatched, even with Virgil's severely weakened form. He was still able to rip into those lesser demons like a rabid dog sinking his teeth into some fresh meat. The devil then approached the war down Sparta estate where Eva initially died. Virgil knew one last thing had to be done to finally defeat Dante, and that involved parting his half human, half devil forms in a one ditch effort to stay alive. Virgil chanted during the separation loudly. <sighs> that does freeze my boy. In order to defeat his younger brother, he could only do one thing with the crumbling flesh and feelings. The attempt was a success, which causes the split of Virgil's entities. The half of Virgil that was only known as Urizen would go on to create chaos throughout the city of Redgrave, ultimately beating Dante yet again. The other half will formulate into a man called V, which is the full humane side of Virgil as he assumes this alias. V watch Urizen formulate with an intense fear. While trying to bind his demon form, he noticed how frail his strength 
was. The effort to move was futile and it came to V's realization that he only prolonged his life. The body was still breaking down anew due to the lack of demonic form which presented a new problem. V then saw Virgil's poem book on the floor, placed where it originally was all those years ago. The book resuscitated old memories to surge within V when it came to remembering a happy childhood life that felt like it was a lifetime ago. V's body would then effectively disappear without a host according to Griffin and then he couldn't return to his previous demonic self since he lacked the power to defeat Urizen. Memories about Mundus were also discarded after Yamato was broken a long time ago but painful thoughts kept circulating in V's mind as visions of V progressed more and more. A demonic bird named Griffin approached V to form an elaborate plan. A plan that involved making V strong enough by establishing demonic contracts. These contracts would bind V's skin to have a method of offense and defense against other demonic foes. The contract wasn't foolproof since there was a rule in play about these demons not being able to finish other demons off. Griffin, Nightmare, and Shadow were the only three entities that were willing to let V bind them by contract, ultimately serving as remnants of Nilo Angelo, which could also explain why the process went so smoothly. V retrieved the cane from an emergency glass container nearby, and the first victim was a demon in Pusa that was readily stabbed to death with it. The cane was not a legitimate devil arm, but Griffin assumed that the cane was forged from materials in the demon world. It was the only thing that could explain its hardened resistance. Resilience. After all, the familiars bound themselves to V's contract, and then it was time to illustrate the next plan. V saw Dante as the strongest devil hunter out there, and the only one that could have any chance at taking on Urizen. V discussed things with Griffin in terms of their approach, citing that Dante would not recognize V as Virgil due to his completely altered appearance. He went under the letter V, even if Griffin thought it was a bad idea, and booked a train to DMC headquarters. Dante needed convincing to take up the job, so V tells him that this powerful demon goes by the name of Virgil, which immediately sends Dante off into the underworld. Morrison was vital to this deal since V had to find him in the first place in order to go to the Quaifoth roots where Urizen awaited. They arrived by helicopter as Dante and Morrison board off to survey the area. V then commissions one more ride to Fortuna so he can leave Dante behind. V wanted to have just one more trump card if Dante loses in the battle with Urizen. More or less, this explains why Nero comes into the picture very late in the DMC5 prologue. V already knew that Urizen was way stronger than Dante when he first stepped into the Quaifoth. Urizen then single-handedly defeated every damn body including Dante, Nero, Lady, and Trish. All of them are wounded on the floor and they fall to this new demon as V proposes that Nero should fall back so he can have a second chance later on. V then goes on a journey to get the devil sword Sparta and seemingly impaled it right next to Dante when his body was discovered in Urizen's chamber one month later. Dante reawakened to go after Urizen himself which causes V's body to decay further and further. He realizes he doesn't have long left for this world and even opens up to Trish and Nero about some shortcomings as a person. Later in the story, Dante defeats Urizen near Sparta's estate. V tells everyone to leave the final blow for him since he blames himself for causing this whole mess. V then leans down on a weakened Urizen claiming they are both one in the same and together their roots will combine as one. Dante overhears this situation and begins sprinting towards V to stop the revival but it's all too late as once more the souls combine to recreate Virgil in a new body and a new form called Sin. Devil Trigger. This form was acquired after Urizen took a bite of the most powerful demon fruit in the underworld, a fruit that even Mundus got a power boost from. Dante tries to attack, yet he's too weakened from earlier battles, so in a stroke of honor, Virgil tells him to heal his wounds and get strong. After that, they can settle the matter for good. He thanks Nero before he departs while Nero is completely unaware of the situation. Virgil then questions 
if Dante would have given his life for him, especially if they were at opposite ends of the spectrum. Dante makes it to the demonic pillar. Virgil tells Dante that if he wants Yamato back, then he has to take it through force. Dante readily agrees, and the siblings start their fated duel. It is revealed during this fight between Dante and Virgil that everything ends in a draw. Dante gets on his feet with shaky legs as Virgil demands to know who Nero is. His brother remarks that Virgil is a big dumbass, validating to Virgil that he is the father who attacked his own kin for power. The demonic sons prepare for one last standoff, readying their demonic arms for a critical strike to extinguish the opposition for good. Just then, an immediate flash of light strikes between the pair as a pair of blue demonic wings brings Dante and Virgil to a grinding halt. A devil triggered Nero vows to put a stop to the long standing rivalry between Dante and Virgil. He fully declares that no one will die between his uncle and his father. Virgil laughs at Nero's proclamation. You came all this way just for that. Claiming that if he defeats Nero, then Dante loses by default. Things don't turn out quite in Virgil's favor, finally being beaten by Nero as demonic roots threaten to destroy the city. Virgil concedes with Dante as they stop Nero from hindering their business upon severing the demonic roots, which means they may never return if the portal closes. Virgil leaves his prize book to Nero with this remark, I won't lose next time, hold on to that until then. Virgil then severs the roots alongside Dante, sparring on a more friendly level to exclaim they have plenty of time to spend together before their next adventure. Virgil clearly doesn't want to talk about Nero or mention him to Dante since he's still sour about that defeat. What the future holds between Virgil and his kin establishing some connection together? Well, we have to wait until DMC6 comes out and then we'll finally get that answer, hopefully. Now, it goes without saying that Virgil is clearly one of the most popular DMC characters right next to Dante. He's like a polar opposite to his brother. Dante is unorthodox, wild, and brash, whereas Virgil is cool, calm, and collected. Virgil is basically an honorable swordsman through and through. We see the equivalent to these things, like a general dislike for using firearms, as well as allowing his opponent to have a chance to fight him at full strength. You can sort of relate their personality traits to Mugen and Jin from Samurai Champloo as well. Virgil certainly has appeared in a large amount of content outside of Devil May Cry. His reach extends to other Capcom crossovers like Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 or Project X Zone 2. Virgil's playstyle was always different with three weapons attached to his person, a signature Okatana, Force Edge, and Beowulf that gives the player a devastating amount of moves. Yamato's darkness properties can also do additional damage to any demons who harbor light as a power. His style is called Dark Slayer, which gives him a key teleport that maneuvers around the environment to avoid enemy attacks. He could also move closer or away from the opponent whilst under pressure. Virgil's main trait is the ability to conjure up blue demonic swords that he could fully impale people with called summon swords. He can also create circles around himself for protection. It's awesome. It's like one of his best like skill sets ever, by the way. Dante learns a similar technique in Devil May Cry 5, which Virgil actually comments on during their final battle. <laughs> can't always have it your way. Interesting. He usually wears a blue overcoat in DMC3 and DMC4. His appearance changed a little bit in Devil May Cry 5 to black fatigues to signify that V has fully re-emerged back with him with a black color scheme. Virgil also likes to slick his hair back to potentially avoid looking like Dante. Virgil also appears in the Devil May Cry reboot, but we don't talk about that guy. Like at all you make quite the team i'm stronger i'm smarter i'm better looking when this is behind the vault door let's not keep him waiting and i got a bigger dick what in the hell was that dialogue you know what i'm gonna sign out you guys have a safe 
fun and nice day you can find me in the description below if you want to like this video please be sure to like it that helps me a lot you know if you really enjoyed it you can subscribe stick around i put out variety content survival horror non-horror related things you can find comic books all that good shit here gaming everything and once again dmc as well when i get around to it because you know i love me some dmc so i will see you guys soon i really enjoyed making this and hopefully you enjoy the video take care peace and later